I really struggle with emotional eating and it's one of the things in my life I'm having a hard time evolving beyond. And besides that, it really affects my sense of freedom. Do you ever struggle with that? Today I'm talking to Chef AJ about how we can overcome emotional eating and really cure it by choosing a plant-based diet. Welcome to Happiness Adventure. I'm Lisa and together we'll explore ways to cultivate real joy in our lives. I really suffer with emotional eating and I know that there are different theories of whether that is an actual thing or if it's really just the food that's addictive and it's not emotional, it's chemical. But right. what would you say is the best way to overcome once and for all emotional eating? This is a topic that even the experts don't agree on, whether emotional eating is real, if it's not real, is there such a thing? So what I would say is if, it's, if you believe it's real, it's real for you. So if you believe you're emotionally eating, if you believe that the reason you're eating is because you're sad or lonely or angry, or you're tired or stressed, then look at what you're eating. Because the truth is, is very few people emotionally eat arugula or, or bok choy or, or mustard greens. So you can usually tell by the type of food you're eating, whether it, you're eating emotionally or not. And so the first thing I would do is just change what you're eating. Because the truth is, is if you emotionally ate or overate on Brussels sprouts, you're not going to get fat, you're not going to get sick. The reality is, is that all eating stimulates the production of dopamine in the brain, the feel-good chemical, the, the pleasure chemical. But the more calorically concentrated the calories, the more dopamine is released. So you get a lot more pleasure from chocolate, which is 2,500 calories per pound, than you do from chard, which is about 100 calories per pound. You can usually tell if it's really real biological hunger by what you're willing to eat. You know, if it's, if it's kale, you're probably hungry. If it's kale chips, probably not. I think if somebody really wants to solve emotional eating, the first thing they need to change is their environment. Because if those foods aren't in their house, they're not going to get in their mouth. And so if all that's in your house is, you know, baby carrots and blueberries, knock yourself out because you're going to get bored pretty easy from all the chewing and it's not going to be as interesting. And plus you're not going to get that high. You're not going to get that big dopamine hit from those foods. So I think changing the environment and changing any source of stress and just getting in touch with why you're eating, you know, because a lot of times people eat because they're tired. Most emotional eating seems to happen later at night when people really need to go to bed, but they're staying up on, you know, check and face. Facebook, things like that. And so they're stimulating themselves so that they could gain a few more hours. What is the best way that you would recommend to get back on track or back on the wagon of healthy eating if we fall out? That's a great question, Lisa, because people's success really in any area, whether it's a healthy eating or any change they want to make or even success in other fields, is not defined by how many times they fall down. It's by how many times they get up. And so the thing is, is it's not your relapsing or slipping or falling off the plan or the program that's going to define your success. What's going to define your success is the ability to get back on quickly. And for me, quickly isn't next Monday or January 2nd or after the vacation. It's with the next bite of food. Most people are going to slip up from time to time or maybe even often, and that's okay. But you need to get back on plan with the next bite of food, not waiting until the next magical day that's far into the future. And that's really all you have to do is just know that a slip doesn't define you. So I would say that the best advice I have is when you fall down, you get up. Chef AJ, I want to thank you for all of the resources you create to help people get on track, stay on track, and the community that you've created. The amount of time and love and effort that you put into it is absolutely unreal. And thank we're going to link in the resources, talk about that in a minute. But I just want to thank you so much for what you're doing for the planet and for people and for the animals. And thank you so much for talking to us. My pleasure. Chef AJ is a champion for healthy plant-based eating, and she's got two phenomenal books out. I'll show them to you right here. She also has an incredible YouTube channel where each and every week she shares how to eat healthy and make it taste delicious. So she shares recipes, she answers questions, and the, that is just an incredible resource, and I cannot believe that she's able to keep putting that up each and every week with so much great content. The links to that, as well as her books and her Facebook channel are all going to be in the description box right below this video. So be sure to check them out. And in the comment section, I'd love to hear from you. Do you struggle with emotional eating? What have you tried in the past? What's worked and what hasn't? And would you be willing to give whole food plant-based eating a try? Your comments really transform this channel into a community. So thank you for liking, sharing, and commenting.
Before you go, please subscribe to Feed Your Happy with a bite-sized video each week. And I look forward to seeing you soon for our next happiness adventure.